we'll go ahead and get started. If people jump in late, then they can uh, jump in. And like I said, we'll send out the recording and anybody that has questions can email me after and uh, we'll go over those and answer any questions that you might have. But hope everyone's doing okay today, having a good week. Uh, we're going to spend about 15 minutes today going over roof valleys and how to create those for those of you who have not done them before um, or who have not watched the tutorial video. The, uh, the video is only about a minute and a half, so I'll spend a little bit extra time and go a little bit slower step by step and, and show you how to create those. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and share my screen with you. And now you should be able to see my screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with this layout here that already has the two levels drawn, but no roof on it yet. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take this from how it is now, and we're going to turn it into this model right here where we've got two different roof valleys, one on each side. And then on the left side over here, you'll see where we have a roof valley as well as a double gable that overlaps each other right here. So this is what our final product will look like. And we'll go step by step showing you how to achieve each different step and, and how to make sure that those roofs are joined up and, and matching correctly. So we're gonna start and we're gonna do this front right gable first, since it's just a basic gable, not the, the double gable you see here. So just the single gable creating the roof valley into the main gable. So as we go over to this project, the main thing you'll see is that right here, we're on the ground floor. Please remember that you will need an additional floor. So uh, for this one, we have the second level here, which is where the roof will be placed. So this would be a, a one story house with a roof set on top. So in order to put this first gable on over here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the main gable once again, we'll go to the roof stage and always make sure that you are on the top floor to set your roof. Uh, another thing I've seen a lot of questions about over the last few weeks is users sending in questions about gaps between the roof and the exterior walls. And generally the reason for that is they're not drawing the walls on the top level where the roof's going to be set. They're a little confused on that part. So just make sure that uh, when you have that top level, make sure you do have the exterior walls drawn. That way, when you place the gable, it'll cut at the height of those, and there will be no gap there between the, the exterior walls and the roof. So the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to start with the gable roof, and we're going to draw the first main gable that goes from front to back by tracing from the corners to the corner. For this one, it's going to, we'll draw it to about right here so that it will cover the majority of the patio, but it will also give us the room here on the front right to draw our additional gable that's going to intersect the main one. So if we go to the 3D view here, once I've drawn it, we'll see that it's cut there. Since it's not covering the outside of the exterior walls, it cuts it here and these walls are sticking up. But as soon as I draw this first gable, we'll see this part above the garage disappear. So once we've got that first gable drawn going from front to back here, we'll jump back to the roof stage and I'm gonna zoom in down here for you just so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna draw an additional gable here. What I recommend doing is starting right at the corner where the, the previous gable was drawn. So when you, when you have the magnetism feature selected, once you get to that point, it will turn it green there for you so that you know that you have them lined up correctly. Once I do this, I'm gonna draw the walls. I'm sorry, draw the roof. We've got our gable drawn, but as you can see in the 3D view, it's going front to back like the, the first gable we drew. So the first thing we have to do in the roof stage is select this front edge and click Ridge Start. Now you'll see here in the upper right hand corner, we've got the gable how we need it to be drawn. But what we need to do now is create that roof valley so that it intersects with this one 
and matches up correct. So in order to do that, once you have the ridge direction going the correct way, we'll simply select this back edge that intersects the first gable. And on the right hand panel here, the roof valley, when we click that, you'll see that it automatically creates that roof valley for us over here. You see there's no gaps in the walls between the two roofs. There's no gap between the exterior walls and the bottom of the roof here. So we have it set just as needed right here. Now you will notice, I'm gonna go back to the roof stage. If I click on the main gable, you'll see that the height is set at 11 and three quarters inches. And if I click on the additional gable that's creating the roof valley, it has the same height. You'll want to make sure that these are set to the same height because you'll see if I, let's say I lower this to a five inch high roof. Now we have the gap in the, in the roofs where they intersect right here since they are not the same height. So make sure that you have them set at the same height so you don't have this, this issue or this defect pop up. But as you can see, if I go back here and change that height back to 11, and three quarter inches, just like the main gable. Now our gap is gone there. So now that we've done this part, we're going to jump over here to the front left. For this part, you'll see, like I mentioned, we've got a valley created by this second gable that we create in the back. And then we also have the front gable here. For the front gable, we won't need to do a roof valley. It'll just inter it'll just join with the roof line of this one that intersects the main gable. So the first thing we want to do is draw this second roof valley that's going to be created. So in order to do that, once again, click your gable roof. We'll start at this point where we left off last. Come down to covering this part of the roof. And once again, you'll see when we finish it in this upper right hand corner, the gable once again wants to go from front to back initially. So choose that front edge of the roof on the right hand panel. We'll go down and click ridge start again. Now we've got the gable going the correct way, but once again, it has not intersected and created that roof valley yet. So we'll use the automatic roof valley function to do that. Once again, just a refresher to do that, you do want to select the back edge of the roof where it intersects, click the automatic roof valley box, and now you've got your first roof valley for this side. So go to the 3D view just so everybody can see it. And now we're going to place our front, our additional gable in the front right here. And we'll create that by going to the roof section again. And once again, a gable. And it is just like I said, make sure that when you're drawing these, it, it's the easiest way to do it. It's going to be to start on one of the corners where you've previously drawn a roof line. And you'll see the magnetism feature turns the dot green when it's placed on the same spot. So you know that you're going to have the, uh, the ridge line connected to the previous roof that you've drawn. So I'll start here on this corner. We're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to trace around these exterior walls. Validate it there. So this one, since it's already joined with one roof valley and you drew it the first time, it's you see it create this roof valley going out the opposite way over the house and the top right here. That's due to the ridge direction not being correct. So all we have to do again is select that front edge and make that be where we have the ridge start on the right hand panel. And as soon as I check that box, now we see that we've got in the 3D view our two gables that are lined up together. Now, one of the things to keep in mind here, like I mentioned with the height on the roof valleys where you want to have them be the same height. 
for the gables that are like this for a double gable where they overlap, you will want to make sure that they are at the same angle. If they're not at the same angle, you will see here, if I lower it, let's just say they're 26. Now it's going to be like that, which, you know, that, that may be a design you have on certain houses, but for this example, since they match up and they run along each other on this side, you'll want to be sure to have them at the same angle in order to keep those touching and accurate with each other. So I'll do the 45 degree angle again and fix it there. And once you've done this, you have your, your two roof valleys, one on each side, and you've also got the double gable here on the front. So you'll see the, the section of the house that hasn't had a material applied to it yet because of the, uh, the double gable we created. So on the material stage, you can simply select the brick, duplicate that covering and place it where it's needed. And now we've got the finished product with your gable going front to back and then the two different roof valleys created and a double gable on the front left. So this is kind of a, a basic example, uh, just so that we can help you guys understand how to change the ridge direction, how to use the, the automatic roof valley function that we do have, uh, and then some of the main things to keep in mind, such as the height of, this, of the roof, as well as the angle of the roof in order to avoid some of those defects. Now, obviously here in the US, we've got some houses that do have some very complex roofs where you may have multiple levels with multiple different valleys. So each project's gonna be kind of different and they're gonna be case by case basis in terms of what we have to do. But for something basic like this, it is very, very easy and uh, very user friendly for you to use our automatic roof valley function. There will be times where you may have to add a point to a roof and do it that way but that's what our support's here for. That's what I'm, I'm here for. If you have any questions, the, uh, the chat or the support email is there for you and there for us to help assist you on any projects where you do get stuck. Um, I'm sure that some of you are gonna have questions right away because your roofs are gonna have a little bit more detail or like I said, be more complex than this one, but this should give you the ability to get started on your own, uh, get, get a number of different things done, um, once you get to this part, you may have some other questions pop up, but I'd be glad to help whenever you get to those points. So let me jump in here. I see there is one question. So are you meaning if Stanley or if if I understand you correctly, are you meaning that the initial gable should cover the entire garage? So let's see, let's see if I understand you correctly and do it this way. So let's see. So did you mean if it was like this, Stanley, and then we just had the one roof valley on the left-hand side over here?
Um, Stanley, I'm not sure I, I understand what you mean from just the chat, but if you have a specific <coughs> a specific project in mind, um, and if you have a visual of you know the elevation or the roof, the uh, the roof line that you're looking for, I'd be glad to take a look at it if you want to email it over to me and I could send you an example of what that would look like. It's just a little hard without a visual or speaking in person uh, what exactly you're looking for. But if you do have a question, feel free to send an email or a chat in and I'll be glad to help. Uh, I'll go back to this for just a second to pull it up for everyone to look at. Um, like I said, this this is a little quicker than the last webinar. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes to go over this, but like I mentioned, you are going to have uh, questions come up. Everybody will because, as I mentioned, each project, just like Stanley's question there, it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis because every house is going to have you know, different roof lines, different roof valleys, maybe multiple levels with multiple different valleys and intersecting areas. So feel free to send in those questions through the support email or the chat with any screenshots or any uh, 2D plans and roofline drawings that you have, and I'll be glad to take a look at them. But uh, it is going to be for each person, it's going to be a case by case basis. But these are the basics of how to get started and how to manipulate those different roof valleys. But um, that was all we wanted to go over today. So looks like only a few of the, uh, we've had about 20 people register, but only about three or four show up. So we'll be emailing this out and that way everybody can review it, can rewatch it as needed. And then, like I said, feel free to send in any questions through the chat, through the support email and myself or one of my team members will be glad to take a look at your project, answer any questions and help with any issues or defects that you're coming across. But I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful rest of your week. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys through the, uh, through the chat and through the support email. Hope everybody has a good day.